Today, we're talking about NCBA's regional stockmanship and stewardship clinics and their value to the cattle industry. One person leading these events is Dr. Ron Gill of Texas, a renowned stockman who always provides great advice to producers. He joins us now with some valuable tips on working cattle. As you start to bring cattle into an alleyway or the next corral, whatever it might be, the best thing to do is push them away, once again, from where you want them to go, get your movement started, and bring them forward. This particular design is similar to what a lot of people have done for a long time, and they try to angle a fence uh, to where they can funnel the cattle into this area. What it actually does, though, is kind of prohibit the handler from being where he needs to be when the cattle start coming around. But that angle keeps you from being up at the front, putting pressure on the cattle you'd like to see. This one is not a severe angle, so it's not too bad. But once again, it, it does kind of limit. I'd rather have square pins than I would have one at an angle coming into an alleyway. This is another different situation because we have to go around a 90 degree turn coming into this alleyway and send the cattle up. So we don't bring too many at a time because they'll wind up balked at some point and then you lose your motion and movement going on up. So I try to fill the front section and then come in and fill behind them so we don't have too many cattle in the alleyway. So now I'm just gonna go toward these heifers. Once again, I have to get some movement in them so I might as well get it away from them and get them positioned where they need to go. Once I get some of them started around, and hopefully I can put enough pressure on them to go on in the alleyway. Once again, I'm just gonna put pressure, step back, let some more flow. If I wanna stop the amount I have in there at one time, then I can take this group on up. If you had enough people helping you, somebody could come behind you and fill the rest of the alleyway. And working an alleyway, you wanna kinda work it like a dog border collie might, go back and forth across if you're working by yourself. And once you get the cattle up here, they're then quiet and ready to go through the processing area. It's interesting when you do that, look behind us, we have cattle actually f filling into the alleyway behind us when nobody has asked them to come. All right, as we are ready to reload the sweep tub and crowd alley, we don't want to use the sweep tub or a bud box or any other crowding area as a place to warehouse cattle. It's a flow through part of the system. It allows, the sweep tub allows you to use the gate to go ahead and push some cattle around that don't want to flow through. But in this scenario, we're not going to put anything in there until we're ready for them to go into the chute or into the lead up to the chute. So now we're going to do the same thing we've been doing out in the pasture, in the corrals. I'm going to go from here to the cattle, push them away from them, get some motion and flow started in the cattle. So as I step to them, they're going to start moving away from me. I don't want to hit them with this gate, so I'm going to give them a little time to come out of that corner. Once we get the flow started, we wouldn't even have to open or close that gate every time. But Once again, as I step to them, I won't get flow started. Try to bring about five at a time on these size of cattle and step forward, close my gate. As the cattle move forward, then I'm going to push this gate toward them. They'll start coming around. Put pressure on the cattle right here to get my flow started. Then I can bring the others to them. But we can do all that without any noise, any pressure, any hot shots, anything we can get our flow started through our chute. I also notice I didn't use the crowd gate of the sweep tub at all. All we did was use it to position the cattle to go in the lead up to the chute. A lot of times in systems with a sweep tub, we'll have cattle that and we won't have a return box or something like that. So we'll just put cattle into the sweep tub. And if the person that's working the sweep tub gate stays back here behind them, he's actually drawing their attention away from the opening. 
The best way to do that is whoever puts the cattle in the sweep tub to close the gate and leave it, and then let whoever's in front walk down the side and get some motion started in these cattle. This is very good representation. It takes a little more time to get cattle to flow out of one of these than it would if we actually set it up right and didn't use it to hold cattle as they come through. But even though it's a little slower, the cattle still float out of the tub when we use our body position. All right, we're ready for more cattle to come into the sweep tub and swing this gate away. Now, I'm not gonna let the cattle just come in right now. I'm not set up really to do that, to get my flow like I'd like it to be. Step to them, let them come around. I'm gonna let this one come with them. Once again, as we get them pushed to the other corner, then they'll be ready to set up and ready to come back around the gate. All right, once again, we want our cattle flowing through this system. We don't want to hold them in here, so I'll wait till they come to the back. Let them start working themselves out of that corner. Need to put pressure on the front to get my flow started. If I don't work on the front, these cattle won't start in this chute because it's doesn't have the right angle. Once that happens, then I can bring more cattle. Now here I'm holding my position. You could do it with a gate, but why not do it with your body position? Once again, there's no stress on the cattle. All I do back up, let the rest of them come in. So if we can get establish that flow, position ourselves correctly, the cattle will learn how to work.